Today, we will talk about the top 10 luxury Suzuki bikes. 10. Suzuki Power Free How can we not start with the motorcycle that started it all? After the Second World War had finished, Japan was in dire need of cheap transport solutions and Japanese industry was needing products to manufacture to stay in business. The two needs came together perfectly. As with the dawn of the motorcycle in Europe, the first Japanese motorcycles were basically bicycles with small proprietary engines bolted onto them, often driving the front wheel. The Suzuki Power Free was no different, although it is significant in that it was the first Suzuki to use an engine of Suzuki's own design and manufacture. 9. Suzuki RM62 In line with its Japanese rivals, Suzuki saw racing as a necessary evil to both promote the brand and to push development and so, by the early 1960s, it was active in European road racing. However, Suzuki was not above a bit of skullduggery if it meant they could win. Ernst Degner was an East German rider riding for MZ. The chief engineer at MZ, Walter Cotton, had perfected expansion chamber exhaust systems for two-stroke engines, and Degner was all but unbeatable in the 1957 East German 125 Coup Road Racing Championship. In 1961, however, Degner, tired of the oppressive communist regime, defected to Western Europe and was quickly snapped up by Suzuki, as much for his knowledge of Cotton's work and techniques as for his riding ability. 8. Suzuki RG500 While Suzuki was making hay in the 50 Grand Prix class in the 1960s, rival Honda was competing and winning in the 125 case, 250 kicks, 350 kicks E, and 500 class, winning multiple titles although, ironically, not the Blue Ribbon 500 title. Despite the efforts of Mike Hillwood and Jim Redman, both multiple world champions themselves. This was Suzuki's time to shine. With all its expertise in two-stroke racing engines, and the RG500 was the result. The engine was a square four two-stroke engine. Initially producing 90 horsepower at 11,000 revolutions per minute, and it would dominate 500 kick GP racing for the next seven years, taking seven manufacturers' titles in succession between 1974 and 1980, and winning the rider's title for Barry Sheen in 1976 and 77, and again in 1981 and 82, with Marco Lucinelli and Franco Ancini respectively. It remained a potent force in GP racing long into the 1980s and gave many a privateer a start in racing, the factory eagerly selling the RG to non-factory riders. 7. Suzuki RG500 Gamma Okay, if we've got the RG500 on this list, then we have to have the RG500 Gamma, possibly the last GP-derived bike the public was able to buy for use on the road. The Gamma was so close to the Grand Prix bike it was unreal. Twin crank, square four, two-stroke engine with disc valves and flat slide carburetors housed in a light aluminum frame. 95 horsepower with a wet weight of 386 pounds spelled ridiculous performance, even if there was absolutely no power below. 5,000 revolutions per minute, and it all came in with a bang above that absolute lunacy for the roads. We need that in our lives again. 6. Suzuki GSXR 750 Arguably the first proper race replica motorcycle, the GSXR 750 of 1985 rewrote the road-going sports bike rulebook in one fell swoop. The oil-cooled 749 kick in line 4 had dual overhead camshafts and pushed out 100 horsepower which was a lot of power in the mid-1980s. The GSXR 750's trump card, however, was both its lightweight and cradle-tight frame, made from square-section aluminum tubes, which were super stiff, allowing the track-derived suspension to do its work effectively. 5. Suzuki GSXR 1000 In 1994, Honda redefined the sports bike with the CBR 900RR Fireblade which took the GSX-R 750's ideas of excellent power-to-weight ratio to a new level. Initially, Suzuki responded with a sledgehammer in the form of the GSX-R 1100, 
but it was nowhere near as light or nimble as the Fireblade So. In 2001, Suzuki revealed the first GSXR 1000, the internally designated K1. The latest GSXR 1000 has variable valve timing and 200 horsepower and remains at a sharp and thrilling today, as it was 21 years ago. 4. Suzuki RGV 250 Proof that bigger isn't necessarily better. The utterly fantastic RGV 250 was built between 1988 and 1998 and incorporated technology and design cues from Suzuki's 250 Grand Prix race bikes of the same period. The RGV 250 continued the previous RG 250 Gamma's groundbreaking use of an all-aluminum frame and put into it 249 kicks, 60 horsepower, V-twin two-stroke engine. The whole bike weighed 282 pounds at the beginning, rising to 309 pounds for later models. The end for bikes, such as the RGV 250, was the proliferation of imported 400 gigs four-stroke bikes, which were much more reliable and easier to maintain. While they lasted, however, 250 two-stroke screamers were some of the best. Sports bikes money could buy. 3. Suzuki Bandit 1200 It might have been a part spin special, using components from many other Suzuki models. But that doesn't stop the Bandit 1200 from being an important bike in Suzuki's history, largely because it cost so little to develop and sold so well, making Suzuki a lot of money. The engine was a retuned GSX-R 1100 unit, with more mid-range torque and around 97 horsepower overall, which is fantastically understressed for an engine of this size and helped cement Suzuki's reputation for bulletproof engineering. For all its lack of sophisticated componentry, the Bandit was a joy to ride, with safe, predictable handling and excellent, smooth performance from the engine. Best of all, because the engine was so unstressed, it was tunable to a huge degree without having to change the basic structure or internals. 2. Suzuki SV650 Suzuki has played big in the 600 class of the years, with no fewer than four separate 600 Class over the years, with no fewer than four separate 600 platforms in the early 2000s, the Bandit Roadsters, the GSXR 600 Sports Bike, the Bergman 650 Maxi Scooter, and the SV650. The SV650 was unique among competitors in having a punchy, liquid cooled V twin engine, producing around 70 horsepower and plenty of brunny torque. Solid, relatively sporty, Perhaps a little understated and dowdy, but like so many Suzuki's, it proved itself to be absolutely bulletproof mechanically and, actually, great fun to ride. With a decent chassis and with basic suspension and braking components, proving to be a lot better in practice than on paper. It's compact, light, and has a good riding position. It's comfortable, cheap to run and repair, and it will last forever. It's both the perfect beginner's bike and great for any rider who knows what they're doing. Being replaced with a parallel twin-engine model for 2023. 1. Suzuki GSX 1300 R Hayabusa The legend, the GSX 1300 R Hayabusa made its name not only for being fast, but for the way it looked. Polarizing is one way to describe the swoopy bodywork, designed with only one thing in mind stability at high speed, which is what the Hayabusa was built for. In the 1990s, there was a surge in unlimited super sports tour bikes coming from Japan. Kawasaki's ZZR 1100 and Honda's Super Blackbird, for example. When Suzuki had a go, it had to beat everyone, especially the Blackbird. Hayabusa is Japanese for the Peregrine Falcon, the fastest bird in nature, and one that preys on Blackbirds and it did so with a 174 horsepower engine in a lengthened sports bike chassis clothed in that bodywork. It wasn't only fast, but comfortable too, making it perfect for long-distance tours. However, the Japanese were getting worried that this boom in performance was going to rile the legislators in Europe, and fearing a clamp down on motorcycles they had spent millions developing agree to a voluntary top speed limit of 300 km/h. 186 miles per hour. 
like that was going to make any difference. The Busa, as it is affectionately known, is still with us in 2022, in its third generation, just as fast as ever, but with new bodywork that has tamed down the looks, but never the speed. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. Before you go, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching my video.